we've got this old buffet here that is now legless. It used to have legs at one point. It was taller, regular buffet height, but probably what happened, one leg broke or maybe a couple legs broke. Maybe they were moving in or something. Anyway, it's had some damage. Someone at one point cut all the legs off of it and now it's just basically a bench, which sometimes I put legs on them, sometimes I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave it short like this and we're gonna make a bench out of it with drawers and, and storage. It's also missing one of the little feet on the sides and it's got some damage to this front foot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a skirt back on there replace this foot on the back and repair that front foot there where it's got the damage with Bondo. Someone upholstered this with brads at some point and I'm hoping the veneer isn't trashed underneath that. I'm gonna take that off and we'll see what we find. It looks like someone at some point has tried to sand it down. There is some damage to the veneer. So this top is probably going to have to get painted unless I really want to just spend all day sanding it down. Someone has also gone and drilled these weird holes probably to mount something else on the top of this at one point. Who knows, sometimes these old buffets, they have a long and storied past. A 3 8 plug fits right down in that hole. I'm gonna add some glue in there and then I'll have to either just float some lightweight or maybe some Bondo even over the top and I'm gonna fill all these little holes from the brads. I don't have very big gaps to fill now that I've got those plugs in there. So I'm just going to go and use the lightweight. This is just gap, patch, and paint. It dries pretty quick. Alright, so this is missing a little bit of the skirt down around the bottom. And then I've got that crack leg here and the completely missing little foot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little piece to run across here and then a little square piece of pine to match the size of the other one and we'll be good to go on this. I flipped it upside down so that it'll be easier to use. I've just put a little tape flag right here for the depth and this is a 3 8 drill bit. I'm gonna drill down right in here so that I've got something to attach this piece of wood to the base kind of like this is here and then I'll also glue the sides and the bottom on. So that's what the tape flag did. It just it was an easy way to get my depth and now I'm gonna just do one more hole. Now to glue it on and put the screws in. I've got this scrap piece of alder from a table build. I'm just gonna cut that down to be the height that I need and the size that I need, but this is two inches or eight quarter board and it's gonna be perfect. If I were staining this, I probably would not use Bondo. I'd probably either replace that whole piece right there that's broken, this whole foot, maybe turn something up on the lathe. But since we're kind of going economical on this piece and we're just trying to turn it quick, I'm just gonna fill it with Bondo and we're painting over that crack there. The Bondo will be very strong. So I've got my Bondo out, probably way more than I need, but I always mix up a little more. Add some cream hardener there. And then I'm just going to mix this up. This is a scrap piece of wood because it usually ruins whatever I use it on. Every now and then I'll use a putty knife, but for the most part, I just mix it up with a scrap piece of wood and apply it the same way and then I just throw it out when I'm done. Because it, it's hard on putty knives. It's hard to clean off. You almost got to let it dry and then sand it off. Okay, so that should be mixed up pretty good there. I'm just going to apply it to my crack here. It's always kind of messy because it's real gooey and sticky, but it sands down pretty easy, so don't worry about that. It is pretty stinky. It's ideal to do it in a well-ventilated area and wear a respirator. I hit the new pieces with some dark stain so you can't even tell that I replaced them. And once they're painted, they'll just stress through and look just like the rest of the piece. I'm gonna sand the top with some 220 grit reason I'm using 220 is because I don't need to remove much material. I'm just trying to smooth out all the places I puttied it 
I'm gonna get the respirator on and the ear protection, and then I'll go ahead and sand this up. So today, my sister Mariah is gonna be helping me. She's a longtime sister, first time paint blender. So I thought it'd be fun if we painted this piece together. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. <laughs> It'll be fun. Um, we're gonna be using Fairy Chalk Mother and Simple Sage. I did clean the piece. This is a buffet, so it used to have some feet. And when I got it, they were cut off. And Zeb did the little repair, she saw him do that. And so now we're just gonna give it a new French country paint job. We're gonna start with Fairy Chalk Mother Simple Sage. And then we will be adding in some white swan, um, blending that in. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're gonna be painting all the detail. All right, so Mariah and I are using our Paint Pixie one and three quarter inch brushes. First time for me. First time, how do you like it? It's very smooth. Very smooth and gentle. The nice thing about Fairy Chalk Mother Paint is that it's self-leveling. So some of the brush strokes will level oh. themselves out. Oops. <laughs> I'm kind of slopping it on there. I am painting the hardware. Hopefully that doesn't offend some people. I'm gonna wet distress it back, so I want it painted. This is a Jamie technique. Dab it in and then just it dab out. it in and then really get into those details. <laughs> what are you trying and to say? And then you smooth it out. Hey, I watch your videos. If you watch my videos, you can paint like so I always have to make sure after I paint hardware that I, there's no drips. That's like the hardest thing that happens. And you could take the drawers out, but I'm not gonna. I uh, always, I always sand nervous. the edges and then it's nice and smooth. Alright, so the top we want to get the paint on there and then smooth it out. Hold on. Whoa! <laughs> that is not the approved method. That is not the approved- Whoa! Reaction. That was not a medical <laughs> professional. <laughs> you know how they, they look at your lab work and they're like, Whoa! That's bad if your doctor it's says that. It's bad bedside manner. Yeah. That's the word. All right, so we're gonna let this coat dry. Then we're gonna come back and do a second coat on top, all around the edges, but not in the middle, cause that's where we're gonna be blending in the white. So there's no need to do a second coat there. And we'll get to that point. Okay, so we did a second coat around the edge. You can see you got full coverage there with two coats and here you still got streaks. I didn't do a second coat here because I'm gonna go ahead and be blending my white, so I didn't need to. Um, I am going to do this drawer and then Mariah is going to do this drawer. So I'm just going to use my squirt bottle, it just has water in it, and I'm going to reactivate this paint so I can blend in the DIY. I didn't wash my brush, so that kind of helps blend the colors. And I'm just putting this on here. I'm going just to the edge of the frame of the applique when we're all done. I'm actually going to come and paint that anyways. So right now I'm just kind of blending that in. And then I'm going to come and add a little bit of simple sage and go back around the edge. See how I'm just kind of blending that in? Then I'm going to go with the whole piece. Was that not my hand? Well, I feel like it's just, there we go. that last spray. Yeah, it's too wet. I think it's blending better than the top did. Well, yeah. it's, it's because I'm doing it. It's because Mariah's doing it. Alright, then you're going to take a little bit of the simple sage. Just a little bit because you already have quite a bit of green in there. 
go around the edge and then soften in the top. Look at that, you're an old pro. Boom. Maybe go over the whole yeah. thing now so it's not two yeah. separate pieces. There you go. But the one thing that I noticed you're doing is like on the arch, you're going like this. You want to come and just have like straight strokes so you don't have any crooked. Because when it dries, it'll make it too segmented. See how I'm just kind of making sure that they're all same direction. So when you're doing your last blend over the top of it, you just want to barely be holding onto the brush and apply very little pressure. And sometimes you'll see when people try to blend and it looks very choppy and segmented and that's because they're putting too much pressure. That last blend, you really just want to make it soft and smooth. So we're going to do the same technique on these two side medallions. Then we're going to come in with our French round and we're going to paint out all the detail. Yeah, I think we should go over the middle. Because otherwise it's just gonna be weird. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my white swan and my French round that you can get at jamierayvintage.com and I'm just gonna come through here and highlight all my details. I do like this brush though. I like that French round? It's nice, huh? It's super nice. It's probably one of my favorite brushes. All right, so on all the flat, the big flat surfaces on the side, the top, and the other side, I'm just going to use my orbital sander and 220 sandpaper and sand it. And then I'm going to take and just hit the edges of this front part. And then the rest is all going to be done with a damp rag. So that way we're not ruining any of the detail work. We have damp rags with a little bit of warm water on our rag and we're just, to clean up all the white, we're just lightly doing it because we don't want to take off all the green, but we're just going to clean up all the mess that we made trying to make all the detail with the white swan paint. So we're just doing it really light, trying to clean up all the edges. And then as we go, we'll distress a little bit harder with a little bit more pressure on all the hardware and things like that just to pull out some of the detail. She's done this part before. So you just go around. I'm pulling back some of the white off of this uh, green on the details too. I feel like it was easier to just wipe it off later than to be super neat with the brush. I agree. Because it's coming off and then it's giving like that old kind of distress back behind too. On all of the hardware, you're going to just push a little bit harder on it because we're wanting all the detail of the hardware to come out. So you're just going to push a little bit more. You have to let it just kind of distress where it wants to and let it be random. So we've got the buffet slash bench all distressed. I'm going to spray it and do a top coat on there. This is Sweet Pickens top coat. Important to shake it really well. It will separate if it's been sitting for a long time, which this has. So I'm going to shake it up. I'm going to spray this on here. Two coats should do it. I'll probably do three on the top because people are going to be sitting on it most likely. And then this will be ready to go. All right, so the last step, now that it's sealed, is we're gonna be using the DIY black wax. It doesn't take very much, which is good, because I don't have much left. The reason why I like to use the black wax after I seal is it gives me a little bit more control, and if you use the black wax over the chalk paint without sealing it first, it's gonna give you a dirtier effect, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but it's not what I'm looking for. I just wanna add some dimensions. and on all the hardware. I'm 
I'm gonna go across this right here. Now the wax is on there, I'm gonna take a lint-free rag and come back over it and blend it in. There's no dry time as far as the wax goes. I just start buffing it in like as soon as I'm done putting it on. And then after I put it on, I let it cure for about 24 hours before I use the piece. If I was doing heavier, you might want to wait longer. But. So Mariah, how was your first paint blending It was fun. It was so fun. I think it turned out okay. I think it turned out really good. It's okay. It's really good. It's good. Do you think it was hard? Oh, no. Because I always have people ask me, they're like, I've never done it before. Do you think it's difficult? It's not, right? No. I but you have to have the right kind of paint. Yep. I mean, well, of course you have to have the best kind of paint. Oh, so, well. I mean, you can't do this with latex, so. No, it wouldn't blend very well. No. But um, what what did you think like made it blend better? Like, what did you notice? What technique? The water. The water, and then like how you held your brush. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you notice like when you start to do the blend, when you first blend, you have a little bit more, like a little harder, and then you get soft, and then that just kind of helps mm -hmm. move it all together. It's definitely like a trial and error kind of thing I think. Yeah and you want to make sure you don't have too much water on there. Too much water for sure. But enough it's water. Too much water is not good. <laughs> and then just kind of sheets off. Yeah. Well and you want a piece so if your piece is already painted it's super shiny like that when you squirt it then that water will just so it's really good to do blending on pieces that aren't already painted. Yeah. And that has the, the paint underneath that your your base coat isn't sealed so that way when you squirt it then it'll blend it all yeah. together. Yeah so it was pretty it was fun. I liked it. I'll gonna blend some stuff when I get home. You could do this again, right? Yeah, yeah. You get to take your your brush home. Free gift with practice or whatever. <laughs> free gift with <laughs> free gift with class. Yeah, with class. I don't know if that was a class, more like tutorial free labor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. A recap of what I've used. I used fairy chalk mother and simple sage. We used the DIY white swan. We each used the one and three quarter inch paint pixie brush. Sweet Pickens top coat and then we used black, the DIY black wax. So, and a wax brush. So there's your list of things you need to get this technique. Comment below with any questions you have about two color blending. It's pretty simple. Once you get the two color down, then you can kind of add. I'm excited to get color in my square bottle. Yeah, like color you wash. Yeah. yeah, that'd be fun. All right, make sure you hit the notifications button so you don't ever miss a Jamie Ray video. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vengeance for more DIY. Yeah,